I saw like two of them, but um, yeah, I do think they're pretty depressing. It's kind of sad that he didn't take accountability like earlier. So given that all the videos that I showed were from various uh, packs and super packs, do you think uh, it could be a little unfair? I know now I'm sounding like my, like as an instructor should. Is it a little unfair that it's we're only focusing on uh, the president's response? Is there anyone else or any other entities that should take a piece of the blame cake? For lack of a better uh, metaphor. I mean, like, who else would you blame? I mean, I know a lot of people, like, on Twitter have been attacking, like, celebrities and stuff like that for not, like, donating money and stuff. But I don't know if they necessarily count. Because, I mean, I say it's not necessarily their responsibility. But, I mean, if they have the money, like, they're definitely in that top tier of people. So I feel like they should donate. But I don't think they necessarily have to because it's their money and they can choose what they want to do with it. Well, we know Rihanna's out here, you know, looking out for people. If I recall, like, she's uh, bought, like, respirators and stuff for Barbados, donated money uh, to New York. I do remember, like, uh, Pharrell had posted something, and he was dragged for Phil. Because he was, like, asking people to donate so they can buy ventilators. And they were like, bruh, you can buy those ventilators. Why are you asking us? Yeah. So, I mean, but beyond that, well... It's like outside of like these attack ads, like we don't see too many from from Biden or from Bernie. We really don't hear them going at each other's throats. I guess you can't go at each other's throats if we're all forced to stay in our houses. Even they are forced to stay in their houses. So I guess it's just something to keep in mind. Eventually we'll all be out. I think up here DeWine has closed schools for all the students he extended it through like may 1st which i'm just like that's wild these kids are never gonna go back to school we're never gonna go back to school actually we're in school right now but oh i remember the last thing y'all heard about uh liberty university <laughs> it's yeah it. how the guy wanted them to go back to school and now everybody got the coronavirus yeah i heard about that what yeah it's this school in uh virginia uh the president of the school is like is a huge Trump fan and like decided to open schools back up about 10 days ago. Uh, so the campus, it has like 5,000 students, about uh, 1,500 came back and it's like real, real dialed back. So like there were very few RAs, uh, like maybe three people working in the cafeteria. Uh, the teachers are still, the professors are still like teaching online, uh, downtown area surrounding the school is like closed and so it's like kids gone wild and now 12 of them have the coronavirus and there's no infrastructure nothing set up in place to help them also virginia is on a stay-at-home quarantine until june 10th <laughs> i did not know that yeah, it just came out yesterday um, because I was, like, looking at um, different internships in D.C. and that was the turning point to where they think that it's not going to happen. That's wild. Yeah, so Virginia has a, yeah, a, a travel order, a travel ban, a, sta a shelter in place through June, and uh, all those babies got the coronavirus, and... Ain't nobody there to help them. <laughs> Tell you what, if I was a student at a Liberty University, I'd sue. I would sue, 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 sue. And then when I'd be done, it wouldn't be called Liberty University anymore. It'd be called Mac University. So if you know anybody that goes to Liberty, you tell them that uh, they should see uh, what their options are. Or who knows, maybe they can all get together and do a class action lawsuit. Because whoever that president is, he should be fired. Well, let's get into it. I'm supposed to be talking about black public opinion. That is the prompt for those of you who have to write the essay. All of the readings, of course, are on Blackboard. So let's get into it, yay. So what is public opinion? 
all public opinion is is just the collection of individual attitudes and beliefs held by the adult population. It's also referred to as the complex collection of opinions of many people. And so, well, yeah, I do have that whole video uh, in the link. I'll just leave the link up. It's uh, one of those politics and government videos that describe exactly what is public opinion. Uh, the study of public opinion has four categories. Uh, it refers to the quantitative measurement of opinion distributions. Uh, could also talk about the investigation of internal relationships among individual people that make up the public opinion as well as a foreign issue. Uh, it can describe or be the analysis of the public role of public opinion. Or it can refer to the study of media that disseminates the ideas on which opinions are based. So let's see, besides race, I do public opinion. That's what I do. Uh, in fact, what, last spring, not last spring, last fall, I taught a class on public opinion. So if you missed that in 2019, maybe, just maybe, you can catch it in 2021 for those of you that are not seniors or juniors. It's a fun class. We did that whole thing for my convention. It wasn't bad. Let's see, what else do we have here? So how do we go about measuring public opinion? So of course, citizens and experts believe that public opinion and political developments can be described using the terms liberal and conservative, uh, at least at the federal level. So we're talking about at the national level, there's a clear left-right divide between Democrats and Republicans that can be easily recognized in roll call votes. And so you can say, all right, I recognize that these people over here, these Republicans, they are conservative in their ideals. Same thing for Democrats on the left side. Yeah, this is my left hand. That they are liberal in their ideas. And so while there is ideological variation within each party, uh, there is a growing distinction or a growing disparity, or not even disparity, there's a widening gap between the parties at the elite level as well as at the mass level. And so that's re being referred to as polarization. Polarization is just the referral of, not the referral. Polarization refers to the uh, more extremism, the development of extremist ideas where instead for it, within each party we have like for the Republicans, red or reds, more fiery, becoming more extreme in ideologies. Uh, Democrats, brighter blues, fiery blues, uh, instead, uh, and, I mean, and as a result, there are fewer people in the middle, fewer moderates, and so it's just this encouragement of more extreme ideals, uh, downplaying moderates, uh, downplaying, or, e I mean, discouraging bipartisanship, anything of that sort. And so, uh, anyways, back to public opinion. So uh, polling organizations and scholars have spent more than 70 years asking everybody their views on issues. And so most of the investigation is done in one or two forms. Uh, you can ask people whether or not they approve or disapprove of an issue, agree or disagree with a statement or policy, uh, or you can ask people to pick their preference among two or more alternative statements of policy. So for those of you that took the mock convention survey, oh my God, or at least any of the iterations of the mock convention survey, uh, there were questions that asked whether or not you approved or disapproved of, I think there was a question whether or not you approved or disapproved of the president's performance or the extent to which you liked certain, uh, certain uh, political figures. I think I had a question that was asking how important did you think issue X or issue Y was? So that was all describing, uh, oh, well, not all describing, they were all types of questions from the first category. Uh, from the second category, if you took the public opinion survey from last fall, you were more likely to uh, see questions from the students that had uh, statements of like, well, options to pick uh, your the best statement that best describes your opinion on issue X or issue Y. But uh, ultimately, both of these styles 
can be problematic because respondents can easily give opinions that they really don't know or know nothing about said issue. So there was for one student who was doing his project or his questions on climate change, uh, had questions about the Paris Climate Agreement. And for that question in particular, he had a lot of responses, even though like he gave a little explanation as to what it was the opinions that he saw on that section, ultimately he really wasn't able to use the results from that question at all because after a while it seemed as if the responses to that question in particular were odd. And so like I told him it could be because people are just answering just to finish the survey so they can have a chance at winning the $10 Chipotle gift cards. That happens. Uh, when that happens those are known as non-attitudes when the opinions people give on issues that they really don't know or really don't care about. Those are not attitudes. And then lastly, most scholars believe that most citizens don't have readily, uh, readily acceptable attitudes or opinions towards issues. Instead, citizens randomly give off opinions off the top of their heads. And so, if you take voters in elections, I think I talked about it a smidge in media and politics, but we go to it really in depth in uh, public opinion. We talk about this whole idea of non-attitudes and that most Americans actually don't have political attitudes on anything, attitudes towards anything. Uh, it's just that when they're prompted uh, for participation in surveys or with an everyday talk, they think about the, they refer to the attitudes and information that is most readily accessible. And that whole process of retrieving said attitudes or said information becomes more polished, becomes quicker, more routine, the more sophisticated, the more educated they are. Uh, it's correlated with interest in politics, it's correlated with education, and those are the biggest predictors of it. So examples of public opinion. Um, so a lot of these actually came from the Pew Research Center. Let's see, make sure that you all can see all this. How do I do this all like that? Can you go away like that? All right, good. All right, so these came, well, the first one on the left-hand side is my left hand. Uh, 2016, Americans, great deal or fair amount of trust in political leaders. I could not find it to see what it would look like in 2020 or especially in 2020 early 2020, you know, when uh, the impeachment was still happening. Uh, let's see. Other aspects for Pew, whether or not the U.S. has changed and where it's headed. This was still back in 2016. It, everything was so much uh, more negative. I wonder how much more negative it would be now in, you know, coronavirus time or in this coronavirus environment we're living in. Uh, let's see, and of course, neither people back in 2016, neither sets of people thought that uh, Trump w or Clinton would be a good or great president. Where are you going to go next? Oh, why aren't you going next? All right, all right. And then, of course, as it relates to what we're studying, because this is not the this is not, you know, just public opinion as a whole. We're talking about black public opinion have surveys from way back in the day. You can read, actually not can, you should be reading those from the two chapters of Tate's book, What's Going On, that's a sign. Uh, so way back in the day during civil rights movement, uh, attitudes of whites on demonstrations by Negroes. All in all, do you feel that the demonstrations have helped or hurt the advancement of Negroes' rights? 85% thought that uh, the demonstrations actually hurt uh, the civil rights movement or the advancement of Negro rights as described by, yeah, not the Washington Post, but by the Roper Center. And then also then back then, the March on Washington, Gallup asked this question, what are your feelings about this proposed uh, civil rights uh, rally? 60% said they weren't feeling it. It's weird to see uh, data from way back in the day on these huge, uh, on these huge historical events to see them like to see what people thought about them in the moment and it's like wow you really thought that wasn't a good look I wonder what events would be that way where it's like I can't believe it happened and I can't believe you know you thought that that wasn't a good idea but hey I don't know maybe if we all don't turn into zombies 
maybe we'll say, you know what, this perhaps this shelter in place was a good idea, or maybe, you know, the impeachment was not a good idea. Who knows? And so nowadays, did I did I get all the nows? I could have swore I had another uh, there was supposed to be another slide. Oh well. Uh for current public opinion ideas, let's see. Uh, in terms of attitudes towards Black Lives Matter, I guess to get us excited for like eventually what we'll talk about for our very last week together. Uh, for African Americans, they they expressed strong support for the Black Lives Matter movement. Uh, yeah, so yeah, strongly support uh, as opposed to strongly oppose. Uh, and then likewise, there is a partisan divide back in 2016 on support for Black Lives, Mo Black Lives Matter movement among whites. Uh, while there was for, uh, for dem white Democrats strong support, meanwhile, strong opposition by the Republican Party. But for independents, there's more support than there is opposition. Oh yeah, and then more talking about this. If we go back to 1969, uh, let's see. It shows that, well, these were actually a series of questions from the Roper Center, and uh, the Roper Center has all the data, but this is from Newsweek and Gallup uh, for the first question. On the number of occasions been shooting incidents between some black militants and police, who do you think is more so to blame for this trouble, the black militants or the police that are involved? Uh, Majority of people said they were not sure, followed by the police. Uh, for the second question, do you think that police in this area do a good job or not so good job preventing crime in the neighborhood? 48% said that uh, they believe that the police are not doing a good job. Uh, and then they gave a list of different people and groups that are run by whites. Do you think local police have been more helpful or harmful to Negro rights? Most said harmful. And then finally, in some places in the nation, there have been cha char charges of police brutality. Do you think there is any police brutality in this area? 40% said yes, there is, followed by 38% that said no, there is not. So this will be interesting as we go into talking about, what's it called it? Black Lives Matter in the last days of class. Also, as black, well, not also. Nowadays, has Black Lives Matter made racial issues in America better or worse? Or has it not really changed things either way? Uh, let's see, back in 2016, uh, unweighted, no one, well, not unweighted numbers, 805. 6% uh, said they didn't know. 36% said it hasn't really changed. And then 48% said it actually made things worse. So more polls actually yeah still from not not back then currently uh so in terms of attitudes towards the american dream uh, people talk about the american dream having a nice home and a financial security for you and your family which of the following comes closest to your view you know going back to uh the types of questions that are asked in public opinion which statement best describes your stance percent of black Americans, 60% said they felt like they had not achieved the American dream, but believe they will eventually do so. 16% felt like they'll never achieve it. And 21% said they already have. So huzzah, I guess. And then in terms of talking about uh, issues as it relates to same-sex marriage, actually, I found this out today. Apparently, there is a movement within the LGBTQ community to actually get the T removed from the whole alphabet acronym. Like I went down a, I went down a rabbit hole last night and night before last. Like there's a, I didn't know there was like a whole movement to remove the T because they argue that the T is related more so to a gender identity as opposed to a sexual orientation. And so as a result, the T should be standalone. I don't know if it's actually going to pick up larger steam or if that was just one of those random uh, rabbit holes I just find because I'm home often now. Well, not home often. I'm just home. And so there's nothing better to do besides trolling the polls and eat in media and social media and message boards on Reddit. But anyways, back to the question. Uh, Question was, do you think Republicans in Congress or Democrats do a better job in dealing with the following issues or problems, in particular same-sex marriage? 
uh, blacks, black Democrats felt that Democrats were doing a better job. Uh, meanwhile, uh, white Republicans thought Republicans were doing a better job. And then in terms of uh, no difference, it doesn't matter, eh, really marginal at best. And so of course, this is what I have <laughs> for today. Uh, on Thursday, we'll really get into uh, Tate what's going on, in particular talking about the transformation of black public opinion from the 50s through the day. Spoiler alert, back during the 50s, uh, African Americans were considered to be the most liberal racial group in terms of political attitudes. However, from the 50s through today, now African Americans, we've, uh, they're, they have become more moderate in their stances. And now, if I recall correctly, the most liberal group. Uh, they, it's not. It's not African Americans. I know that much. I actually want to say it's the LGBTQ community. Yep, that's why I want to say it is. Like they are the most uh, liberal. But why is that the case? What caused that uh, change? That moder That what caused African Americans as a racial group to moderate their stances or to become more conservative over time? We'll talk about that. So. Uh, take a chance. Take a when you get a chance, you can check your uh, midterm grades. Uh, if you have any questions, send me an email. I'll get back to you. Uh, and we'll pick up here on Thursday. Y'all enjoy the rest of y'all days. I'm gonna end it. Oh, did anyone have any questions or anything? Before I disconnect? No. No. All right. I see y'all on Thursday. All right.